Well, we want to say that this month, uh, uh, we're, our showing here and our program is called Symbols of the Soul. And uh, we first want to invite you by saying a welcome to words falling from the sky and the present moment, the good news from Sedona. So this month's so is called Symbols of the Soul. And uh, the first thing I thought about uh, well, before I get further on, I say, it also includes the Day of the Dead celebration on October 28th. And the most important thing we say about the Day of the Dead celebration, to make it clear to people we're not celebrating Halloween or skeletons, we're celebrating our ancestors. Because without them, we wouldn't be here, number one. And number two, what they carried for us in terms of uh, our knowledge, intelligence, our poetry, our art, is all gifts to us from them. So we honor them in this time of the year. And so the show symbols of the soul. Uh, oh, well, I'm skipping places here. Let me tell you about our branding. I love to tell people about our branding because it's what you feel when you come in here. People tell me all the time, it's like our brand is trust your heart, number one. And most people, we always want to tell them trust their heart and encourage them to. And our second brand is it's a place of connectivity. All kinds of people get connected through our space here, and that's one of our main purposes. And the third thing we say is you've never seen anything like this before. And we got that from people coming in the door and telling us. I said, well, that's good. That's an important thing to, to say about ourselves. And we always talk about art, science, and nature, and how they're connected. And uh, we feel that's the most important message we have here. And I, uh, I've come up with this new coinage of a phrase, which is nature is the mother of art. And this might surprise you. Art is the mother of science. Well, how can art be the mother of science? And, uh, well, it's, a, it's an easy thing to explain. Uh, nature inspires us through experience in profound ways. And when those experiences become so incredibly overpowering, we have to do something about it. It inspires us to do something. And that something only comes when you get out of your normal space and transcend into your creative space, at which point uh, you create what I call the symbols. And the symbols are, are pictures with messages and meanings. And this has gone on for, for, for millions of years, the very first inspirations, they got so, went into the cave and made the marking. This is something we will communicate for our generation to generation. It's that important. So out of that, of course, comes um, what I call the symbols of the soul, because it's our souls that are accumulating this vast repository of experience that gets translated into creativity, which becomes uh, the food for our souls to continue on the journey. So that's why we uh, honor art so much as the progenitor of science, because those symbols became, well, first they became art and then they became dance, then they became music, and then they became the buildings we were living in. And then after that came all the science, because when all these symbols get strung together in awareness and consciousness, they become greater meaning and they lead the pathway into understanding deeper and deeper the, the love, the creativity, 
the, the, the mysteries of nature, which can never be completely understood, but we get further and further into our, deeper into our understanding. With mathematics, astronomy, and physics are a bunch of symbols all written down that have been given meaning over a vast amount of time and people's energy, and those are our ancestors that did that for us. So it ties really well into our enjoying, celebrating the ancestors on the Day of the Dead. We'll move on to there to new science. And there's been a couple of really lovely things. As we all know all the earthquakes and volcanoes and typhoons and uh, hurricanes. Uh, not necessarily the good news. Um, but it is news nonetheless. But the good news is they've now come out with uh, uh, the science, which has been mothered by art. Uh, this is so lovely circle here. They've come out with the, uh, now they believe thoroughly that interdimensional travel through quantum fields is a very real reality. And you go, well, okay, well, one of the things that that connects to with me is over there on that wall is my latest uh, painting that uh, came from inspiration. Uh, and you'll notice there's a figure on the bottom and a figure on the top. But the figure on the bottom is this, uh, a great being out of the Mayan uh, pen, pen, um, myst mythical system of their deep ancestors of themselves in nature, and that's Chalk Sib Chalk, who's in charge of all the water in the Milky Way. Not a, a small task, but he's in charge of all that stuff, and he is in his uh, interdimensional teleportation device. And he's teleporting himself uh, to the center of the Milky Way. The figure on the bottom is when he's here, and the figure on the top is when he's been transporting himself uh, to this next destination to manage the water of the Milky Way. And uh, he's quite a figure. But now, just as I finished that painting, the article came out about interdimensional communication through different dimensions. I thought, well, that's a wonderful coincidence. And we love the fact that we now know there are other dimensions that are affecting us. There's another one. <laughs> maybe that's what the problem is, right? Or maybe that's what the solution is. We're not quite sure. The other big thing to know about, there's two more big things in science, new science. One is October 12th. If you haven't heard, don't know. There's, a, there's, a, there's an asteroid coming by very, very close. And it's called TC 2012. It's traveling 30,000 miles an hour. It's the size of three or four simple giant school buses, and uh, we're hoping that it will pass by uh, without colliding. It's coming by very, very close. It's going by uh, uh, one-tenth of the distance between the moon and us, so it's nine times closer to us than it is the moon. There's a great little app out there if you go into Google and it says, it will show you a little drawing of the Earth circling the sun, and then it'll show you the moon going around the Earth, and it shows this asteroid going <laughs> Oh, it's coming really close. And, and they never know, really. There's, there's lots of uh, debate over how accurately they... Uh, a year ago, they thought it would be 4,000 miles, and now it's 30,000 miles, so... Uh, TC 2012. It was discovered in 2012. So we also have another thing in new science, how art affects us. A great, wonderful uh, art, uh, po uh, article came out uh, today. It's called, How Art Affects Your Brain. And uh, we have an article here uh, which has the link in it if you want to go out and see. It's a beautiful uh, video of the ballerina dancing in your brain. And uh, it explains how uh, peace and happiness and the beauty that comes from art affects our immune system, our physicality, and our uh, psychology. In the hospitals, that's why they have art in them. They know. 
and they've been studying it for some time, and it changes your immune system. And now neuroscience, which is this latest video that comes out, has been showing what centers of the brain light up when you're experiencing dance, poetry, music, a great painting, uh, a great poem. And so we all want everybody to know that art and science, they're working together uh, along with nature to create a better world for all of us. And uh, we, we look into that because we want it to be recognized and supported. So this first poem is called Movin' and Groovin'. We're in the poetry section now. Uh, to October's Dance. Red rocks rising into a rose-light filled sky as ancient temples of stone. Pilgrims ascend stone stairways of living light. Distant drums Resound on the canyon walls, vibrating as an invocation to the great mother blood moon, as an invocation to the distant path, as an invocation to the present moment and to the unseen future, to the ancient drumbeat receiving and embracing the solar heartbeat as its blood flows and glows as a reflection of nature's heart. And it glows and it glows and it glows within the solar light bloodstream. And it glows and it glows and it glows with all the blood of all the souls all the souls lost to war, all the souls lost to greed, all the souls lost to hate, lost to delusion, lost to anger, and lost to jealousy. All these souls, it's a treasure house of souls, they're all now residing on the moon. And they're all now waiting patiently and silently all within the absolute stillness of nature's heart. All now being reborn. All now anchoring in belief. All now in a new beginning. All now hungry for the music, the painting, the sculpture, the dance, the play, the song poetry, the architecture, the sacred space and energy that nourishes and supports the creative in each newly reborn soul is guiding them to the center of their being, to the center of their gravity, the center of their happiness, the center of their joy the center of their compassion, the center of their equanimity, and the center of their peace. As their place in nature heart is revealed in gratitude for the peace that is found in the oneness of being. Thank you. It's a good song. It's one for October. It's a good one for. I have to have a little sip here. I'm getting dry. Uh, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. It's just a little sip. A little sip. <laughs> and this one here is one uh, that uh, is about you know what's going on, sort of, but it's about change. It's called a change is coming. A change is coming, this we know, this we see, 
This we feel. This we hear. Oh yeah, we can even smell it. It's that, it's that powerful. It's galactic change. It's sun change. It's moon change. It's earth change. It's asteroid change. And one we know so well, it's climate change. Another one we know so well, it's political change. Ocean change, ice change, volcano change, earthquake change, cosmic ray change, eternal change, personal change, physical change, psychological change, internal change, every change, all change moving into the alternative states of being and non-being, the bridge between ego and the oneness. Find your center of gravity, balancing there, riding the great waves of probability as they roll in the ocean of change. Surrendering in joy as the still center the, to the present moment to embrace eternity in the oneness. Well, the, this one is another one here uh, that I just, it's, it's brand new and it's, it also comes from the very present moment and the, it's not from looking at a beautiful flower or the stars. Uh, but we all have reality to live with, so I try to write poems that will help me steer my way through uh, all the changes. And this one's called, O oh Karma. <laughs> o oh Karma, O oh Karma, you are my friend. O oh Karma, O oh Karma, you, you really are my friend. Oh, karma, oh, karma, I see you coming my way. Oh, karma, oh, karma, I see you coming my way. Oh, karma, oh, oh karma, I got no choice. <laughs> got no choice. I guess I'll have to play. You bring me joy. Oh, karma, you bring me sorrow. You bring me compassion. Oh, karma, you bring me jealousy. And you bring me love. Oh, karma, you bring me hate. And then you bring me compassion. Oh, karma, you bring me anger. And then you bring me patience. Oh, karma, you bring me greed. And then you bring me equanimity. Oh, karma, oh, karma, your path and mine are one. You have laid the way. Oh, karma, oh, karma, I know the game you play. You know the way. Surrender to love. Surrender to compassion. Surrender to happiness and joy. Surrender to opening the heart with compassion bringing in the eternal, vast love of creation. It is the universal way. O oh, karma, O oh, karma. I know the answer. Changing my view. Changing my view. O oh, karma, O oh, karma, O oh, karma. I'm changing my ways. I'm changing my ways and I'm changing my ways. Thank you for teaching me. <laughs> it's all we can do. We just have to have the right view, right? Uh, and then we can ride this, this 
course. This energy <laughs> that we all get to experience. It's, it's 2012 and it's drum roll. It's going on for at least uh, five more years. If we can make it through five more years, we'll all live forever in peace and happiness and joy. <laughs> That's what I think, you know, there's, it's because of technology, it's, it's, it's changing, the medicine is changing so fast and our ability to produce things is going to be altered so radically by the nanoscience and nanomedicine and the uh, ability to create through atomic precision manufacturing, which is a real thing, everything you need where you are. You don't have to move it, which uh, is, would save a lot of energy if you think of all the things that have to be moved in the world for us all to exist. So just that alone is enough savings to give you all a check to last for the rest of your life. And uh, that's what we're trying to manifest with our thoughts and visions and dreams, and they're not just dreams, because if you study technology, the potential of huge transformation on our planet is like a fruit that's ripe. Mm -hmm. And it's happening so quickly, most of us don't know about it because we're stuffed full of the other nodes. So you have to research into the journals and things and find out what people are doing. And that's very good news. So this one here is called Open Up. Open up all the gates, all the doorways and paths to all the heaven's boundless gifts and all the earth's healing gifts of the sacred portal of nature's heart, of the sacred portal of your love's heart. Embrace the novelty, the newness, the new models of change and transformation. All of creation is sending its blessings and gifts to us. Receive them and create the new models of joy, compassion, and love as gifts from the heavens. Share, care, grow closer to one another. Know the oneness of the heart. Bring peace to the one soul you have to share and be present always in the golden moments that you encounter. Uh, okay, I gotta look at the time here. Oh, we're doing just fine. We got time for one or two more. Uh, this one here is a little bit uh, kind of, uh, it starts out a little tough. Uh, but there's an answer in it. It says, we lost our compass. We lost our compass in the vastness of space and time, grasping for balance. We've lost our gyroscope too. You know, it could be too late. Losing air, losing water, Losing fire, losing the earth, losing space and time, losing country, losing authenticity, losing truth, losing trust and empathy. In the present moment, let's hold hands. Let's hold on to each other. Let's hold together. It is the heart medicine. The only way to come through this perfect wave of darkness and deceit is meditation. Finding compassion for the compass of your heart and soul. And joyfully communicate with your community. Changing from in is waiting for you. Join the circle of eternal love Set yourself free. It starts out hard, but it's not in a really good space. I think so. Okay, well, well this one here is uh, connected to the Symbols of the Soul show. 
It's called language of the symbols. Listening to the oracle's message. Strange, strange sounds of multi-dimensional spinning symbols. Symmetrical magic. Whirlwinds whispering. It is a language of the invisible, the invisible domains, the invisible domains of oneness. Octave shifts, dancing in the ascending spiral, awakening of consciousness, slowing it down into present moment time. Claritas. Integritas, consonatia, radiance, wholeness, and harmony. The mantra of the oracle. I understand more deeply now your symbols of nature's heart. I am grateful for your messages woven into the essence of all our souls the soul of the earth, the soul of the moon, the soul of the sun, the soul of all space and time, and the soul of all no space and time, the soul of the universe, the soul of all universes, as it embraces us with equanimity and love. And all these are symbols, symbols of the soul, because we, each attach meaning from our experiences. And when we share our meaning, we share the symbols of the soul, and that's what creates this incredible network of intelligence and awareness and compassion and love that is keeping our world together. Because we know what's not keeping our world together, for sure. So. I've come to the conclusion that that's what's keeping the world together, and we always conclude by saying each of us are very important. Do not discount yourself, because whatever energy you have that comes out in peace and compassion or creativity or sharing or generosity or a helping hand, is a measurable energy. And that measurable energy is your part that goes into the big pot of all that caring and sharing and compassion and love and peace and equanimity that is keeping the world from going. Well, the Hopi Jose, the pull shift. Well, what is the pull? The pull, in my mind, is the psychology. And if it shifts one way, uh, trouble. It shifts the other way, ascending. So, and we're each responsible for the energy that goes into the world. And all of our energies together, thankfully, have kept the world in one piece. And we pray that each of us will go forward in the next days and, and a year and spread our meditation, our peace, our compassion, our love to those who are open to receive it. We are not evangelical. We're not going to try to convert someone. The people who, who, who are asking for help, we can help them. And that's the most important part of it. Is that we don't have something we want to change somebody's mind. We want to nourish people's minds in the places that are positive and creative and uh, connected to the compassionate activities that go on all over the world. And we're all part of it. And thank you again for being here and sharing with us and taking the time to be in this sacred space that uh, we generate all this energy from. And we appreciate your attendance, your support, and your beautiful faces and smiles because uh, it all makes a difference. We've all shared deeply, and we're actually now, you know, I can go on a little bit about uh, the invisible, the biome, uh, 
a trillion beings live in us and among us more than all of the cells in our body. And uh, we share them all together in this room tonight. They have uh, 10,000 times more genetic information than us. They probably created us for their purposes. And uh, we need to know them well. And they have all taken everything from us and are now sharing it together. And they're 10 trillion strong. And, uh, they're good people. They're, they're good people. You know. They're small, though. You can't see them. <laughs> <laughs> but they're very powerful. Do not let their size fool you. <laughs> so be in harmony with the little guys. That really, we know now, that is your health. That is our health. If we're not of, out of sync with our invisible friends, we get very sick and die. And so this is the new medicine. Well, well until the 20th century, you couldn't even, nobody had seen one. And now we know all their names and who they are. And if we find one we don't know, we make sure we know who they are so we can be uh, careful with them. Because uh, there are ones out there that don't help. <laughs> so, so be well, be kind, be whole, be compassionate, be loving, and uh, hold hands and gather together in groups of happiness. Thank you so much.